Hey guys, how is it going? It's a beautiful day outside. It's uh, April the 10th, I think, and it's noisy. It's noisy and busy where I moved. I didn't expect that. Anyways, so it's a beautiful day. It's about, I don't know, 20 something Celsius. Nice and warm outside. And soon my grass is gonna need mowing. Like, if you can see, I have a lot of it. And that's only my front yard. My backyard is probably three times bigger than this. So anyways, uh, I have a lawnmower, a tractor lawnmower, but uh, I have one little electric weed whacker, I wanna call it. This one, and, and this one was pretty good for when I was living in, in a much smaller property. Didn't need so much weed whacking, <laughs> if that's a term but now i would be much better with this ryobi and to be honest i found it on the side of the street somebody got rid of it and i just picked it up that was in the fall so i don't know maybe it has some terminal damage and that's why it was thrown away but you never know might be just a simple carburetor cleaning or something like that so i know they're cheap but it's worth checking this one out Maybe there's some other damage, maybe the engine is okay, but there's something on the head that is not good. I don't know. So, uh, let's check and see. We might be able to fix it, or if in the worst case scenario, we might put it back on the curb. <laughs> so, here it is. It is Ryobi. 780R 18 inch head 31cc engine and to be honest I don't even know how it works I've never used one of these so I have to try and learn it first and go from there so anyways I'm gonna set you up on the stand and let's see in the first play if it turns at all I've never tried yeah she turns and she just beat me <laughs> she turns okay so let's see where the spark plug is oh here is the spark plug let's take out some covers remove the spark plug and see if, if it has spark as a beginning there's a dead bee inside so here's our problem so that's the choke good I don't know what this is, but it's like I found three or four pieces. Can you please stay? What? Oof, it doesn't smell very good. Let me try and secure it somehow. I don't want to squeeze it too hard so I don't break it. So maybe here, let me squeeze this pipe. Looks like this nicely, so let's see. No spark. Is it on? Yeah, it's in the on position. Let me try the other position just in case. No, no spark. But at least it turns really well. And when the spark plug was in, it was hard, which means we have a good compression. So that's encouraging. I wanted to remove this cover too, because this is where the coil, whatever the whatever's making the spark is. I wanted to remove this cable, and I took apart this lever here where the throttle is, and the throttle lever is snapped. Somebody obviously didn't know about the lock, and they probably pressed too hard, and they broke it. So the throttle lever is broken. Well, that's fine. We're gonna figure out something about that. And uh, I also wanted to check the switch. Maybe the, sw the switch is shortened. That's also a possibility. I don't know how it works, if it just shortens to kill or if it closes the circuit for the coil to work. I don't know. We'll see. But I want to strip it more than what it is stripped already. Oops. Went flying across the garage. <laughs> Disconnect the switch for now. 
He's gonna fall out now. Yes, perfect. So that we're spinning the little crank. How can we block it? Let's see if I can close it, lock it here. Yeah. And this is the clutch have a centrifugal clutch so when the rpms reach higher rpm this just opens from the centrifugal forces and engages with this little thing okay so we're gonna figure it out so do we have to take the clutch out so we can take this cover off i just want to get rid of this cover maybe we should take the springs out first watch carefully guys because you're gonna have to tell me how to assemble it after How does this come off now? Let's see if we can unscrew it. Let's see if we tap it gently. Is it moving or am I breaking something? There you go. Hmm. So this is what makes the spark, but what tells it when to make a spark? This is what tells it when to make a spark. There's a magnet here, right? Yeah. Maybe the, adjust the adjustment was not right. Okay, let's take it, take it completely off. Oh, this is some strong magnet. Oh. I'm guessing when these two magnets pass, they tell it to produce spark. I just don't know if this circuit needs to be closed or open for the coil to work. But we can figure out how the switch works. Okay, so I snap the screw here. That's not good. Okay, we're gonna come here to my power supply and we're gonna limit it to one volt. And we're going to connect it to the switch here and we will see i'm expecting that of course it one position is going to be short but it's actually in position one it's open position zero it's closed because now it shows short you see it's using three amp already because it's short okay so we know the circuit needs to be open because in position one the switch is open okay that tells us a lot so we don't need this basically need to put it back on too bad i snapped the screw eh? but we're gonna try with one screw and i don't know what the distance here needs to be between the magnet and the thing this is where i'm really not familiar with these things but uh, magnet is so strong i'm gonna put zero six just because I feel like it. And I'll put another one behind the other side. Okay. I have six tau spacers there. And that's where I'm going to tighten it. Let me snap this screw too. let's see if it is gonna make any spark now and now we have to spin this really fast with a drill for example and we will see it's actually making spark now i don't know if you see it it's a very weak spark but it's spark Okay, I, I removed it again because I want to try and extract this remainder of this screw and I didn't pay attention before, but you see this hose here, I don't know if you see it, 
there was a hose here from the carburetor to the little thumb pump here which was totally missing and also the other one is snapped but uh, anyways i'm gonna have to buy this hose but first of all let me try and extract this screw and we're gonna go from there okay uh, i tried drilling it doesn't work for whatever reason my drill bit doesn't want to budge there so i think i'm gonna try another method of extracting screws uh, which i saw somewhere on youtube they were explaining how to do that with uh, copper tube i don't have copper but i have a brass tube which i'm gonna cut a little piece of i'm gonna put it there and then i'm gonna try to weld inside directly on the screw as you know on uh, copper and brass the weld won't stick so i'm hoping to be able to build up some uh, weld on the screw and then first of all that's going to put heat on the screw and second that's going to give us something to grab on and try to shake it loose so i have the tube on a vice grip and i'll try to locate it right on top of the little screw and we're going to try shoot weld inside okay you know what we have aluminum outside so we don't ever we don't even need the brass i'm gonna try without the brass Snapped again. So I drilled and tapped a hole here. Now we have to make a spacer to raise it to where it was before and then we can run a long screw and that's going to hold it the problem is i don't have the same screw the thread is 1032 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually reduce the size of this to 190 tau and then we're going to tap our own 1032 thread on it Okay, so I shortened the screw a little bit. Our spacer fits perfectly there. Let's see how it's going to work for us. Now let's see if we still have spark. Yes, perfect. I might have created the problem myself, but at least I was able to fix it. Yeah, so let's put this part back so we can use the pull start and then we can test and see if it is gonna start. Oh, the spacer, okay, you're right. You're right, I forgot the spacer.
Okay, I'm not gonna put the clutch yet. It has a spacer here too. Okay, so we have spark, we have pull start, I guess you know what's next. Yes, that's it. We have some two stroke premix here. I'm just gonna squirt some inside and let's see if she's gonna at least show us some signs of life. He's alive. Let's do that again. <laughs> I'm gonna try any more. She's alive. So let's see if if we can make her stay running. There is something that's confusing me. This hose was coming out and into this hole, the shorter one. The longer one is obviously from the gas tank going in. So when you pump, it pumps from the longer one to the shorter one and into the carb. So that's clear. But what is this? Is that some kind of a return? There's still a piece of hose on it. You see? And where does it go? I couldn't find anything where it would go. I have two holes here. These two holes. The lower one is for this hose, but maybe this other one was coming out through this hose. Like, I don't understand. Where would it go? It doesn't return it into the tank. Anyways, looks like I'm gonna have to pause it here. I'm just gonna assemble it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna have to order a hose and wait. I hooked, I hooked her up directly here with the thing and let's see if she's gonna stay, if she's gonna start and if she's gonna stay running now. Now, I need to go across the garage and find the other spring and the two parts of the clutch because I was so smart that I ran it without the drum of the clutch and now, and the clutch from the centrifugal forces went so far. I just heard it. I don't know if you saw it, but I heard it going somewhere across the garage. So, not really sure if I'm gonna be able to find this ever. Anyways, that was stupid of me. <laughs> okay, it's a few days later, and the other night I was able to find some of the parts that <laughs> flew away from the clutch. I didn't find all of them, but to be honest, I didn't spend much time looking for them because whatever I found didn't look very promising. <laughs> so, yeah, that was stupid of me to run it with the clutch without the drum because the, the drum would have kept it together, but since there was no drum, the centrifugal forces were so strong that the clutch broke. So anyways, I ordered new clutch, it's on its way. Uh, I also ordered another trigger for the throttle, so that's on its way. But I also ordered this hose and it's already here. I think we have more than enough here. I also ordered five new primers <laughs> because they come in fives because you know, you need five. Anyways, they were cheap, so I ordered five. They are on their way. We're gonna try today without changing the primer. Primer bulb, I think it's called. So it might leak because it has a little crack here. So we will see if it leaks, whatever. We're gonna change the primer later. This hose that I ordered, it actually is five different sizes which is good because it turns out that here we have different size hoses. Looks like on the primer we have a small 
and because also on the tank I found the second hole that's for the return line it turns out that it was there I never saw it so uh, I'll show you now how and what we're gonna do so it turns out I looked it up it turns out that we have the filter inside which I took out already so this is the filter and I didn't order a new filter I might regret it later but it doesn't look too bad so we're gonna reuse it so the filter goes inside comes out through this hole this is the feed line of course it goes through this hole all the way to the bottom of the carburetor this is the feed line this is the return line after the carburetor which goes back through this little hole here and comes to the primer and from the primer there's another line going back to the gas tank so that's how it works and when you prime it you actually suck through the carburetor from the gas tank i think the hardest one would be the the filter so let's start with that so here's a better view of all the different sizes here i'm gonna try which one fits best here on the fuel filter but also very important it is which one is going to fit in this hole well this one doesn't so maybe that's where we should start from first see which one is going to fit inside the hole because this is also a seal once it goes in yeah this one once it goes in that's it there's nothing else to seal it so we're going to push it through a lot so it can come out from the gas tank filler just like that now here we have this washer which is gonna go on the outside i'm gonna shove this in the filter okay now we can pull this back i'm gonna try to push it with this from the other side yes good perfect now we have to determine how long we want it so something like that this is where i'm gonna cut it now we can put this washer through and push it through here without pushing the filter back in that's tricky right okay now we said through this hole and it goes and it goes there to the bottom of the carburetor so we're gonna shorten it a little okay now this should be a smaller size i think the return line so the return line goes to the short one. Oh, this one is better for here. It's nice and tight. I don't know if you see the hole there. Because I don't. There you go. Come out here. And I'll give it some slack. And now it needs to go to the back of the carburetor right there. So I don't know if you see very well, but this is where the line goes. I, I honestly don't know how to position it so you can see. And also for me to be somewhat easy to work, you know. But here. <clears throat> Can't even push, okay that's it so these two lines are done and the last one is from the bulb to the inside of the tank and it goes into this hole so it goes inside the tank just half an inch or something it's a tight fit for here as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it on 45 Hopefully, this is going to help us. And now, 
here to the bulb. And that's it. So let's put some gas and see if she's gonna run. Oh, oops. And most important, if she's gonna stay running. Not much in this mess. So this is non-ethanol in Canada. The premium on Canadian tire, the 93, is supposedly non-ethanol. At least that's what it says on the pump. So that's the best for small engines. This non-ethanol. This hold this. Choke. Yeah, this bulb is gone. I'm gonna start leaking. Okay, that's not gonna work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate it. So I'm gonna disconnect this and this. Shoot. Let go. Okay. So we're gonna ah, we're gonna use this as a connector, and we're gonna just bypass the bulb for now until we get the one on order looks like we have fuel in the car so adjustment screws seems like it's running a little bit too fast but I don't know I opened the door It's been a few days and uh, I got some parts here I'm gonna show you but first I want to remember here what happened so so we, we made this uh, trimmer run but we couldn't keep it running and uh, I even tried switching the lines feeding the carburetor from the top which I think it's wrong the right way is how we connected it the first time where the feed line is going directly to the bottom of the carb then the return line goes back in here goes to one side of the primer bulb and then the other side of the primer bulb goes back to the tank but anyways i tried even this way and it didn't work so i determined that it needs a new fuel filter because here if you remember here we didn't change the fuel filter we just installed the old one and maybe that's the problem so i got these parts here so i have new fuel filters i have five primer bulbs because that's how they come in package uh new trigger for the throttle and a new clutch because i broke the other one <laughs> so i'm going to install the fuel filter and i'm going to rearrange the lines the way they were in the beginning we've done that already together so i'm not gonna keep you here i'm gonna do that and let's see if it is gonna run this time okay everything else is connected here I had to uh, actually reduce the size of the hose because because the new fuel filter is a little bit bigger and I needed to put a bigger hose there but the other side where it fits the carb right here if I have the same big hose that runs from there it was too big for here so basically in the middle I made a small connector the same connector that we used before for this line and 
that works well. So now the, the bulb is here, the primer bulb is here, but on the video that I watched, the long port was on the bottom and the lo and the and the short one was on the top. But here it fits only this way. I tried fitting it the other way, it didn't work. But anyways, uh the short port is the one that sucks because when I hold my finger there, the bulb doesn't come out. So this is the one that sucks and this is the one that blows. So this is the return line from the carb. It needs to go on the suction and the outlet goes back to the tank. So that's how it is. So let's fill it up and see if she's gonna run and stay running. Okay, so let's see. Yep. And now it started returning it into the gas tank. So perfect. So choke. Let's see. Half choke. No choke. She won't stay running again. So what I figured is that this is the screw for air fuel mixture adjustment, but it had a little tap here on this side, which was limiting it from turning too much. So it was going only from here to here and that's it. So I cut this tab. So now I'm able to turn it even more like up to here but i think if i go past i want to go past because this is hitting here the red tab which i don't know what the red is for but i want to go past that okay let's see now Looks like she needs to go even more, but this top now here, this is hitting, so I'm gonna cut that as well. So it looks like we got it right. So this is where we're gonna leave it. And now I'm gonna let her cool down a little bit and we're gonna assemble back all the covers, the clutch and everything. This clutch is 
way smaller than the old one but it is what it is hopefully it does the same job Uh, that was supposed to go to ground somewhere. I'm not taking this cover off again because it was supposed to go on this screw unless I drill a hole here. Ah, Elin, Elin. How about that? And now I can just put it here. which works. Well, it's not perfect, but it's gonna become better with more and more cutting and raking during the season. So I have to go around the edges of entire my property, which is not really small. <laughs> it is pretty big. So around there on the street, up to these trees there, here, this is my fence and all the way this way. And then all that, in the back let me show you here too around the house i want to clean up here i want to clean up all this fence here around the fence over there even even behind that fence is still my property but that's our uh, atv truck let me show you 
so there we're not gonna do much work so here this is our atv truck you can kind of see where it started forming the trails <laughs> here but yeah maybe we can clean up a little bit here and make some more turns for us but over there all the way to these trees is where our atv truck is and behind that it's still our property but it is just the bush so maybe one day we're gonna clean up there and we're gonna extend our truck but for now this is where we're riding our bikes so yeah that's why i needed the trimmer because I have a lots of work to do So that's everything guys, I hope this video is helpful for some of you, or at least you got a little bit of entertainment watching me struggle here with mine. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting, subscribing, and stay tuned for our next project, which is... <gasps> wow!